hear Rupert Hazel and Elsie Day in Harmony Larity. <laughs> by the Quarrel Society, and we are now back in the Giggle Factory. Oh, first of all, I want to thank all those listeners who wrote us letters after our last broadcast. Not that I think fan mail's important, anyhow. i tell you how I got mine. Last time I broadcast, I happened to mention that I said something to my wife, and she hadn't spoken to me for five years, and 257 married men wrote and asked what it was. <laughs> Which isn't very funny, I mean, but it's all right for a start. Anyhow, it's all very well for you to sit in comfortable rooms in your armchairs and criticize. This job isn't easy. You can't learn it. Some men are born wireless comedians. Others never laugh at their own jokes. Do you know, there's many a budding wireless comedian lying, sleeping in his cup tonight peacefully, whose parents don't think there's anything wrong with him at all. It's the most tragic position. You know, I read in the paper the other day, that a certain radio comedian thinks of all his funniest jokes just before he broadcasts. I think of mine just after. <laughs> I get funnier as the evening wears on. You know, about half past eleven tonight, outside our local hostelry, I shall be a scream. Ready, help! I mean, it's very easy to get laughed over the air. You've only got to poke fun at married life. I do hate a comedian to do that. I think it's doing a lot of harm to a very flourishing Canadian industry. And... I resent it very much. I'm married and I'm proud of it. Too late to be anything else now, anyhow. And I'll never forget the first interesting event that happened in our married life. A friend of mine came up to me and said, Congratulations on the arrival of the new vocalist. Is it a little soprano or a little tenor? I said, Well, as a matter of fact, it's neither. He said, Don't be silly. It must be one or the other. So I said, No, it's not. It's a male voice trio. Oh, and talking about. Don't laugh too long. It stops the show. Oh, talking about. Talking about married life, I don't think I've ever told you about my friend Jim. I'm not busy for five minutes, so I might as well talk about him. Now, Jim's been married three times, otherwise he's normal, mentally. I went to the funerals of his first two wives. He invited me to the funeral of his third wife the other day, but I refused. My wife said, well, why not go? The food's always nice. I said, well, what's the good of going anyhow? We never have anything of the sort to invite him back to. And I... Oh, look at the happy married wretches rejoicing all in a bunch. Oh, and I now say to the... Okay, I... Rupert, did I hear you uh, say something about food? Oh, it's little healthy. Yes, why? Why, well, you promised to take me out to supper. And I'm as empty as a drum. Well, beat it. You know, Elsie thinks... <laughs> Elsie thinks of nothing but food. I wonder if she's so slim. She doesn't care a straw for the hay diet. Her favorite song is How Am I Chewing? Hey, hey. <laughs> We went on our holidays to Cheddar last week, last year, and I said to Elsie one morning, I said, listen, we're just going down to the gorge. She said, where are they having it, you know? <laughs> Elsie, did you see the girl I came in with tonight? I did, Rupert. I think she's very, very she's smart. She's smart, isn't she? She is She dresses smart. in the latest fashion. Really? Well, what's that? Well, you see, she dresses according to what they give her to eat, you see? Yes, I... I mean, if they hand her white meat, she dresses in white. If they hand her salmon, for instance, she dresses in pink. If they hand her raspberries with seven four fins. She dresses in red and so on and so forth, you see? And I go to supper with her every Thursday. But why Thursday? She's on a very light diet on Thursday. Well, now, I've got... <laughs> I've got some very sad news for you, listeners. Elsie's going to sing. You may as well know the words. Rupert's going to play on his one string fiddle. And little Audrey laughed and laughed and laughed. Apple too, not here. <laughs> Elsie's going to sing a little song entitled... She was only a chemist's daughter, but on troubled waters, she cast that oil. Chew for salt.
Lord, we know our value. <laughs> as long as you don't find it out, we're safe for another couple of minutes. And now, we're going to give you our original version, uh, Burlesque version, of commercial broadcasting. Radio Boutique, This concert comes to you by the discourtesy of Pickham Pool. The pools are the push. First of all, we'll give you the dividends. Ten millions, nine hundred and eighty-six thousand, six hundred and eighty-nine pounds, nineteen and six for safety for one penny. <laughs> Invest the penny in our pools and wipe out the national debt. The first item on our program is a song, A Little Love, A Little Kiss. <laughs> Buy our juice old grapefruit. Full of health-giving vitamins. There's more in our grapefruit than meets the eye. <laughs> Ladies, are you afraid to look the world in the face? Do your eyes show lack of courage? Use our tweezers and your eyebrows will show pluck. <laughs> Men, do you suffer from muscular pain? How to get rid of your pain in the neck? Send her to bed and drink the guzzle whiskey. And Tried the new cure for lumbago? Rub your back with plenty of butter. Buy cow brand butter and give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> Are you satisfied with your radio set? Do you have difficulty in getting foreign stations? Buy an oscillator set and get them all at once. Are you too stout? How to lose a stone in a week? Eat plenty of our famous dripping. Constant dripping wears away a stone. <laughs> Girls, are you plain and unattractive? Do men stare at you? Wear our latest bathing costumes and no man will look you in the face. <laughs> 